Well, we thought we would do a video on our water heater. Quite a big question we get at the moment. We've got a blog post, which we'll link in the description, about ways of heating water in your van, and people aren't really aware of the way we heat our water. So we use a system called a calorifier tank, which essentially uses the engine to heat water. So we have a 10 litre single coil tank from Sure Cow. Sure Cow. Picture here. Not sponsored. We bought Not it ourselves. Not sponsored. Yeah. <laughs> all ourselves. It's just Sure Cow's just brand. There's other people who do it. Single coil just means we're feeding it from one engine. So not many people have heard of them because they're more popular in boats in comparison to like camper vans and motorhomes and stuff. People are always like quite intrigued by how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you around the van now show you how I fitted our system, how it, and just the basics of how it works. So our water system is all behind here. Let's take a look. This is our water system. It's probably not the neatest in plumbed in. Best, I'm no expert, but works for us. This is our water in, and this is our water pump, and then our accumulator. And then it goes through a filter system, and then out comes the fresh water. This here is the chlorophyll tank. So this is 10 litres. So I'm going to take you through the basic steps. At the bottom of the tank, we have this valve here. So this side here, we have the cold water that comes in. So this is what fills our tanks up. It will fill all the way up here, all the way up the tank. This here is a relief valve. So if the pressure in this tank gets dangerously high, it will dump the water out, um, which is never triggered on ours, and hopefully it never does. That then takes us on to these two hoses. This is where the engine coolant is flowing in. These run through the floor all the way to the front of the van up into the engine bay. Because it was a lot easier I dropped them through the engine and then pulled them through. That's how I didn't try getting them up through the engine. That would have been awkward. So this is the engine bay. So what you can see here is those two hoses I said about go all the way down there to these two here and then they come up here you need two of these 90 degree elbows and all I did was you see here along the back of the firewall these two hoses here run into the depths of the engine so this is the coolant fluid coming up into here to go into the heater matrix for the cabin blowers so all I did was I cut one of them put the elbow in so this, this pipe here was going here so all I did was I cut it put a pipe off onto one end and then that runs off to the chlorophyll and then the return pipe comes back up and all I did was on this pipe cut that one and then put an elbow in there essentially fitting the chlorophyll tank in line into the existing coolant system pipes all you need to do is refill up your coolant levels and you'll probably have to put a litre, litre and a half worth of coolant back into the system simple as that, locate your two hoses going into your heater matrix and then essentially cut them with an elbow in or straight. I think our pipes were 28 mil, but you're probably best googling it. What I did with ours, I cut them because I couldn't get the actual original fasteners off and then I used a um, circumference measure thing to work out the inner size of the pipe so I knew which connectors I needed to buy. Also the thickness of the pipe and the length. We're now looking at the top of the tank. So this is the thermostat. This allows us to pre-mix in cold water. For example, the engine's normally 85, 90 degrees. This will allow us to adjust it, the maximum kind of temperature out would be around 60 degrees, which apparently will increase overall tank capacity by about 25% because you're using less hot water. Essentially, hot water just comes straight off the top. This expansion tank here is the only requirement you need and all we've done is put a T-junction in here. The expansion tank will allow the hot water to expand without putting stress on your pipes, causing them to fracture or burst. I personally advise all of your tap sink and showers have mixer taps on them because then you have finer control of the water. How does it work? It's quite a simple system really. Basically the same concept of all your other kind of tanked water heaters be that a gas system or a, a diesel system. It's got a 10 litre body of water which fills the tank. So what you're seeing now is the immersion heater, which screws into the top of the unit. 
coil, the metal pipe inside the cylinder. So this is where the coolant fluid flows around and then the metal pipe's got fins on it and dissipates the heat into the water. And then as the coolant's continuously flowing around the engine through the chlorifier tank through this metal fin system and dissipating more heat, it's heating the water up. It's a very simple system in reality. It wasn't that hard to install. What other water systems are out there? Your tank systems are similar to the chlorifier. They all have, they store a body of water and they heat it up, either using electric, gas, diesel, heats up the water. A gas system's like your instant hot water heaters to heat water up as it flows through. They are quite cheap, but they do tend to say in the instructions for external use only. However, people have used them in the vans with plenty of ventilation, they seem to be fine. But I've never used one, so I can't vouch for them. And then there's also your combi boilers. For example, you've got the Truma, which I believe is like starting price of £1,000, but that's a boiler and a room heater, a space heater at the same time. So it's a two-in-one unit. And there is other units like that. There's some diesel versions as well. But there is plenty of options to heat water. One thing which I don't think works is electric to heat water. Unless you've got like a 230 volt supply, a main supply. Because it takes a lot of energy to generate heat. So using electricity to heat your water is probably not going to work. I thought we'd answer some questions that we get asked quite a lot about the system and how it works. But if you have any other questions, just let us know and we can answer them in the comments. How does it heat up? It uses... There's a coil, which I'll put an image up now, pretty bad quality, but there's a coil inside the tank which um, the engine fluid flows round and through that coil into the water. So that's essentially how it works, it just uses the engine's coolant system to, to heat the water up. It's a very simple concept. How long does it take to heat up? So the time to heat up really depends on how cold it is outside, the longer it takes your engine to warm up, the longer it takes the water as well. So if it's freezing outside, it's going to take a longer for your engine to get up to temperature if the water is freezing as well. But basically 30 minutes of driving is boiling hot water. It's pretty much the average. Uh, in the summer it can be a bit sooner, maybe 20 minutes, but 30 minutes we've always got boiling hot water. If you're idling, however, just sitting still, it probably will take a bit longer because you're not pushing the engine to warm the engine up quickly. How long does it stay hot for? We usually will park up about six, seven o'clock at night and by the time we get around to cooking dinner and washing the dishes later on in the evening, say three hours later, maybe three or four hours later, the water is still boiling hot. But by the morning, so say 12, 14 hours later after we've had breakfast, the water is a lot cooler. Um, you wouldn't want to shower with it basically. For doing dishes, washing hands, things like that, it's fine. So is it clean? Is, is the water that comes out of it clean? I'll let April go over this one because she had just ran this crazy idea when I first looked at getting it. Yeah, so when Shane told me that we were going to be using the, the, the engines, he, I was like, well from the coolant system, I literally thought that the water coming out of the tap would be hot engine coolant somehow it took it out of the engine and put it into a tank heated it up and then it came out of a hot tank hot tap apparently not it's all clean there's no contamination so it goes back down to that coil i was mentioning with how it actually heats the water up the heat passively transferring between the two materials between the metal coil and the water means the water is isolated from the coolant system and the coolant system is isolated from the water so you don't get any contamination whatsoever it's clean <laughs> Why did we go for this system compared to all the other systems out there? We were originally going to get a gas system. We went to a meetup and someone had a chlorophyll system so we had a look at it and we thought actually this would probably work for us and it would work better. So the main reason why we went for it was because we don't have to think about getting hot water. It just as we're driving, because we drive pretty much every day going from destination to destination, heating our water up. So we've always got hot water when we pull up somewhere. If we go for an hour's drive somewhere, we've got boiling hot water. Typical like trip would be like we'll drive a couple of hours to the beach. We've got boiling hot water. We'll go to the beach for three, four hours, and then we'll get in the van and then we'll drive another couple of hours somewhere. We've still got boiling hot water. And then we'll park up somewhere for the night and we've got boiling hot water. You just don't even think about it. 
Whereas before, with a lot of like the gas systems and other water heating systems, you can't use them until you're parked up, which means a lot of them you park up, have freezing cold water, and then have to wait an hour, half an hour to an hour for them to actually warm the water up. Whereas we, as soon as we park up, with it's done already. That was the main selling point for us, because so that, that's the main that. thing was the fact we've just got hot water all the time. We don't really have to, to bother with it. Mm. Maintenance, well, there isn't really any. The only thing I, I tend to do is, is just keep a, a checking the, the coolant levels. Would we recommend it? So, yeah. Yeah, as long as it would fit the way you travel, then yeah, we definitely recommend it. The only time we wouldn't recommend it is if we if we think it wouldn't work for the style of travel. Yeah. Like, but generally, as the pro as a product, yeah, it's the good. system works and it, it's good. Are there any negatives to it that we've found so far? So, for our general use, there's no negatives for our, our as personally. For us, yeah. But there would be negatives for people who want to park up for days at a time because you're having to run your engine to heat your water up. I think the only thing for me is not having the hot water in the morning. It's usable. Sometimes I've had to boil a pan. This is where we've parked up in the afternoon so the water's 12, 14 hours later. Tend to come out more like lukewarm so it's not ideal for washing with. Yeah. But I think it depends on your travel, like as Shane said, if you are a family and you go to a lot of campsites for example and you're there for say a few days at a time, there is the option of having the immersion heater within the tank. Basically you can hook it up to your 230 volt electric yeah. and if you're on a campsite you can just plug in and that's the only um, negative I can think. Obviously if you're on a campsite it's not so bad because you do have that option for the 230 volt but if you're like a family that wild camps and just stays in one location for a couple of days it might not be the best option for you because obviously you'll have to run the engine quite a bit but other than that i think that's really the only negative that we can think of really isn't it that's our system if you've got any questions let us know in the comments we'll try and answer it if we can yeah and if you've got the same system or similar system or just in general any kind of water heating system let us know how you how it is for you give us some feedback so we know for future so thanks for watching i hope it helped you or don't forget to subscribe oh yeah <laughs> like and subscribe